In 2004, I downloaded a demo for a multiplayer arcade racer called Trackmania. Its bright graphics, fast gameplay, and bite-sized tracks had me hooked. I played that demo over and over again, and probably put in 100 hours more when I bought a full copy of the game. Racing in Trackmania is all about time trials. You race at high speeds on a crazy looping track that's anywhere from 15 seconds to 2 minutes long. Your only goal is to finish the track as quickly as possible. If you make a mistake, you can restart your run with a single button press, meaning you're racing almost constantly. And while you can play Trackmania alone, the game is really about multiplayer. At its high point, there were thousands of community-run Trackmania servers. In multiplayer, everyone raced simultaneously, but with no collision and only 10 minutes to set your fastest time. When time ran out, the fastest racer would get a quick shout out, a new fan-made track would load, and the race started all over again. But Trackmania servers also had mods and plugins and custom soundtracks. Lots of them. You'd race at 200 miles per hour to Eastern European techno, with an all-time leaderboard on one side of the screen and low-res GIFs on the other. Map votes would let you nominate your favorite tracks, and in-depth time charts would let you compare your checkpoint times. Playing Trackmania was as much about community as it was racing, and that community existed only because of dedicated servers. When I think about my favorite memories in multiplayer, almost all of them involve dedicated servers. I think about playing rocket launcher only games in Red Faction, or discovering custom maps in Halo CE. I remember my obsession with 24-7 surf or zombie servers in Counter-Strike Source. And I recall all the times I played with friends on private worlds in Minecraft. Dedicated servers give a sense of community to multiplayer gaming. Joining a server with its own custom maps and plugins feels like walking into a LAN party. There are the regulars who top the leaderboards and the familiar maps that always get the most votes. For those who don't have a regular gaming group or someone to share a controller with, a favorite server fills that niche. Most modern multiplayer games are all about matchmaking. The game groups up players based on their preferences and skill levels, and then loads them into a shared match. There's typically zero customization presented to the player, other than which game mode they want to play. And the back end is completely locked down by the developers. Mods, add-ons, or plugins just don't exist. While matchmaking does make multiplayer more stable and balanced, it also makes it more sterile and dull. And even when a game does support dedicated servers, like with the newly released Trackmania reboot, it's locked behind a confusing subscription model. There are still plenty of games that support dedicated servers. Whether it's a classic kept alive by its fanbase or a new release with open multiplayer, there are developers who embrace the player-driven communities of dedicated servers. But that number is dwindling. For those of us who want that comforting feeling of hopping into our favorite server, seeing familiar usernames, and playing obscure custom maps, it's getting a lot harder to do that. And I think that's a big loss for gamers. Oh, hello there. You've caught me practicing my reading. Boy, I sure wish I wasn't illiterate. Clearly you've enjoyed another Subpixel video. If you could like, comment, or subscribe, it lets us and it lets YouTube know that our content is worth watching. In the meantime, I'm going to get back to pretending.